Hi everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make the, the Emerald Isle Shawl. And I just want to thank everybody who helped me pick the name for this shawl and the person who came up with the idea first. And I just want to thank Helen Verma for her suggestion for the Emerald Isle and I'll be making sure that she gets a copy sent of the PDF for free. As always, you can find this pattern for free on my site. If you would like to buy the PDF with the pictures, you can find that on either my shop on Etsy or on Reverly. For this pattern, you're going to need a 4 millimeter hook or a size G hook. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be using a 5 millimeter hook or a size H hook for the US. The yarn is from Yarn Art from their flowers line and it's a thousand meters. You can find the link and all the information about the yarn on the pattern page on my site or on the PDF. My finished shawl measured 260 centimeters or 102 inches wide and 70 centimeters or 28 inches tall. The gauge was two stitches per inch or two stitches per 2.5 centimeters. This shawl was made to be a plus size shawl, but as you can see in the pictures with my daughter who is 11 right now, uh, she can still wear it in all kinds of cool ways. So I hope that you don't let that deter you. Use it for yourself, let your kids use it. It's really nice. Okay, when you first begin, make sure that you leave a little bit of a tail that you can sew in later. So to begin your shawl, you want to begin by chaining three. And then in that first chain that you did, you want to put eight double crochets in there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, once you have your eight double crochets in there, your chain two will count as a stitch as well, so you'll have a total of nine stitches. So for row two, you wanna chain two and turn. You wanna double crochet into the beginning stitch. The very first stitch of your row, put a double crochet in there. Now your double crochet and your chain two counts as two stitches in that first stitch. You want to continue and put two double crochets in each of your stitches around. And at the end of this row, you should have 18 stitches. I'm just finishing row two by putting my two double crochets in the top of the ending chain two. Should have 18 stitches. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, for row three, you're going to chain three and turn. And then working in that very first stitch, you're going to be creating your first V-stitch, so put a double crochet in that very first stitch. And the chain three will count as your first double crochet in chain one. So that's your first V-stitch of your row. Now chain one, and you're going to be skipping the next stitch. And in the following stitch, you'll put a double crochet in chain one. You're going to be chaining one pretty much after every stitch you do. If, and uh, after every peak stitch too. So in your next, you'll skip your next stitch again. And then the following stitch, you'll put another V stitch. So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet, and then chain one. Then you're going to skip your next stitch. And in the following stitch, you're going to put a double crochet chain one. Then you're going to skip the very next stitch and then the one after that we're going to be creating our peak stitches. So in you skip a stitch and then the following stitch here should be your center stitch and your top peak stitches will be two double crochets chain one and then two double crochets all worked in that same stitch. And then don't forget chain one then we're going to repeat what we just did here. Over here we're going to mirror that. So you'll skip the next stitch and the following one you'll put one double crochet chain one. Then you'll skip the next stitch and the following one you'll put a V stitch. 
you'll put a double crochet, chain one, double crochet to create your V-stitch. And don't forget to chain one. Then you're going to skip the next stitch and then the next you're going to put one double crochet, chain one. And then in this you'll skip a stitch and in the next stitch you'll put a V-stitch. And then this is the only time you don't chain one. The very last uh, V-stitch of your row or peak stitch of your row you'll just not chain one, you'll just find that top chain, the ending chain and put a double crochet in it. Okay and this is what the end of row three looks like. Now for this pattern there's some tips I want to give you right off the bat. You're always going to be chaining one after every stitch you do. So every double crochet will have a chain one after. So it'll always be double crochet, chain one. And after every peak, top peak stitch is what we're calling these uh, for the pattern. When I say top peak or peak stitch, I mean that I want you to do two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, and then chain one. You'll always be chaining one after. And V stitches are going to be the simple double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So if I say V-stitch, this is what I mean. And if I say peak stitch, this is what I mean. Okay, for row four, we're going to chain two and turn. And in your V-stitches, this row, I want you to put peak stitches. So two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one. And then in the next two double crochet, I mean, sorry, the next two chain one spaces, you're going to be putting a double crochet decrease in each one of those. And how you do that is you yarn over, insert your hook in the stitch, or in the space, sorry, pull up a loop, yarn over, and only pull through two. Then do that again, yarn over, go back into that same space, pull up a loop yarn over, only pull through two. Three loops on your hook, then you'll yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and then chain one. And you'll repeat that for the next one. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, then pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same space, only pull through two, then pull through three and chain one. And that will bring you back up to your V-stitch again. Your V-stitches, this row, will all be worked as peak stitches. So again, we're going to put two double crochets, chain one, and then in the same V-stitch, we're going to put two double crochets and chain one. Then you have two more spaces again, two, one chain one, two more chain one spaces, and again, you're going to be working that double crochet decrease in both of those chain one spaces. Don't forget to chain one after. Insert, pull through only two, yarn over, pull through only two, and chain one. Now your top peak stitches in this pattern will always be two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one. So just keep that in mind. You will always do these the same. And I'll tell you why that's important later. I have a knot in my yarn there. Always okay, chain so one. the next two chain one spaces will, will again be the double crochet decreases. And then again, your V stitches will all be worked like peak stitches this row. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one. Then again, next two chain one spaces will be double crochet decreases. And then your V stitch at the end, again, will be worked as a peak stitch. Chain one two double crochets. Don't chain one, remember, after the very last uh, peak stitch or V-stitch of your row, 
you do not chain uh, one at the end you have to scoot your stitches over to find the top of that chain and you'll want to put a double crochet in the top of that chain and that will end row four and this is what it looks like at the end of row four okay for row five you'll chain two and turn now in your first if you if you go by this very first one you know that's your ending double crochet so then you move over this is the first two double crochets of your peak stitch there's your chain one there's your other two double crochets of your B stitch you're going to move on over to that peak stitch here the center stitch and you'll V stitch in your peak stitch when it comes to the the ending uh, peak stitches or V stitches you're always going to be alternating so one will be V stitch which will go with your double crochet row and then this will be your peak stitch that will go with your double crochet row I mean double crochet decrease sorry so you'll have peak stitches the thicker ones with your double crochet decrease rows everything is much thicker and then on your off rows where you use V stitches you'll be using single double crochets chain one so it's like more of a hollow row so just remember that they go together V stitches go with your double crochets and your peak stitches will go with your double crochet decreases every other row you'll be switching V stitch peak stitch V stitch peak stitch but you'll always have these top peak stitches always be double crochet two double crochets chain one two double crochets okay so after your first V stitch here don't forget to chain one then you're going to be putting a double crochet chain one in the next three chain one spaces so find the first one here then you'll double crochet chain one then your next space here double crochet chain one then your third space double crochet chain one now we are come to our peak stitch again and we're going to be putting a V stitch in our peak stitch in chain one then again you'll repeat that you'll be putting one double crochet in chain one in the next three chain one spaces and then in your peak your top peak stitch you'll always put two double crochets chain one two double crochets chain one then again you're going to move on to the next three chain one spaces and you're going to put one double crochet chain one and those next three chain one spaces now you come to your peak stitch here and you're going to put a V stitch in your peak stitch chain one and again you'll be doing a double crochet chain one in the next three chain one spaces and then your very last peak stitch will be a V stitch so double crochet chain one double crochet on that same stitch remember no no need to chain one at the very end just double crochet in the top of your chain two and this is what it looks like at the end of row five and I believe this is basically it's a repeat of the last two rows four and five every other row like I said will have double crochet decreases and then these will be uh, the double crochets and every time you have a double crochet row you're always going to be adding an extra space so it'll slowly keep growing just keep putting your your alternating your peak stitches and your V stitches every other row depending on if you're doing a double crochet row or a double crochet decrease row and your top peak stitches will always be double crochet to double crochet and what I did to help myself out here is I got some long tails and I'll show you how I did that okay I got pretty long tails here and what I would do as it got bigger and bigger and bigger I would get on either side so it sounds like somebody's drilling across the hall 
I'd get on either side of my peak stitch and I would place a marker, one of these long markers on here kind of loose, it doesn't have to be tight and then in the stitch right below it I just pull one of those tails through and then you can kind of pull both sides to tighten that way I'd have this part, I mean this part of the shawl would be, would have this marker and then when I flip the other side it would also have a marker already there for me and I would do it on both sides but you don't have to, it's just a reminder when you get to this part that you need to and I just keep moving it up as I went and I have my shawl here I want to show you this this is the center row see how they're all peak stitches and then the ones in between get to what color you can see here oh I'll just go this way here you'll see let me get a little closer every other row one is going to be peak stitch and then the next one will be a V stitch then peak stitch then V stitch that's how all those are going to go on the, the second and the very last of your rows so you'll see this is the ending it's also peak stitch V stitch peak stitch V stitch it's alternating the only one that doesn't alternate is the very top middle and as you can see let me back up just slightly this row will be the double crochet decrease followed by double crochet rows so just think hollow you know double crochets are going to be the more hollow row and those are the ones you'll be doing your v-stitches on and you don't need to worry about counting or anything as long as you are putting your double crochets in the chain one spaces of the double crochets that you did the time before you'll always be increasing one in between your peak stitches so between this peak stitch section and the very end of the row here it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and I've almost got it done I got uh, it gets dark here right on the end and I'll make sure I share pictures and whatnot but I wanted to make sure that I get this film before the weekend so that you guys won't have to wait like last time so anyway so regardless of uh, the repeat already being here I'm going to go ahead and do a few more rows for you because I'm still doing my shawl right now so I have it very much in my head so I'm going to run you through a few more rows of it so for row six we did our V stitch and our double crochet is the previous row so you're always going to chain two from now on you'll always chain two and turn and the only difference is of the start of the row is if there's a V stitch here or a peak stitch here if there's a V stitch then you put a peak stitch so you're going to put two double crochets chain one and two double crochets chain one and then in all of your chain one spaces which now you can see there's one more now one two three four last time there were three so in the next four chain one spaces you'll be doing your double crochet decrease so again you'll yarn over only pull through two do that again pull through all three chain one again yarn over pull up a loop pull through two do that again pull through three chain one and keep doing this until you reach your V stitch or your peak stitch whatever it is you'll always just kind of mindlessly go about it and then when you reach your, your next V stitch you'll put a peak stitch so double crochet two chain one double crochet two chain one now again you have four chain one spaces so in the next chain four spaces you will be putting your double crochet decreases and don't forget to keep chaining one at the end then I see by our marker we're getting close to the peak stitch and remember your peak stitches are always done the same 
So you'll be putting your two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one. Then again in your next four chain one spaces, you're going to be putting your double crochet decreases in there, your peak stitch and your V stitch, and then you'll continue all the way to the end where you put your peak stitch here, no need to chain one at the end, and then just double crochet in the ending, chain two. Okay, I just finished the peak stitch here on the end. I didn't chain one. I'm just going to find that top chain of my chain two to double crochet in, and then that will end row six, which is a repeat of row four. So the repeat uh, of row five now we're going to be doing for row seven. And again, you'll always chain two and turn. Now we have our peak stitch, so we're going to be working V stitch in there. Chain one. Then you're going to be putting one double crochet, chain one, and all your spaces up to your next peak stitch. And since it was four last row, it should be five this row because it will increase by one every time. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five. We have six. Ooh, oops, because I messed up right there. Right there on the end. So I got done with my last peak stitch on the end. You don't have to chain one on the last one. Just find that top of the chain two and double crochet to end row six, which is the repeat of row four. So now we're going to be doing the repeat of row five, which is going to be row seven for us. I'm just going to keep repeating rows four and five. So this is the repeat of row five. So for row seven, you're going to chain two as always and turn. Now we're going to be working in our peak stitches will now become V stitches. This row, chain one, and now we're going to be careful not to uh, to get in between the two double crochets for your peak stitch. There, make sure you come over and you find your next your your actual space between your peak stitch and your first double crochet decrease, and you'll put a double crochet chain one in that space. And then continue to put a double crochet chain one in all your chain one spaces until you reach your next peak. And, and since it increases by one, and it was four last row, we should have five this row. So now we have one, two, three, four, five spaces in between our two increases here. So we did a peak stitch last row. This row we're doing V stitches chain one and again move past your peak stitch and into the actual stitch between your peak stitch and your that's the only uh, thing you really need to watch out for and once you get your chain your double crochet chain ones and all your chain one spaces and you make it back up to your top peak stitch I can see a marked here to remind myself and I want to put two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, chain one. Then we're going to repeat it on this side, putting our double crochet chain one in our chain one spaces. Should be five this row. And that brings us back up to our, I'm running out of yarn here, it brings us back up to our peak stitches. So again, V stitch in your peak stitches, then chain one, uh, double crochet and chain one in all your chain one spaces till you get to the very end of your row where you will put a V stitch here. No need to chain one, just double crochet in the top of your chain two from last row. And that will be what it will look like and it will continue to grow on its own. Uh, if you find difficulty in finding your peak stitches, then feel free to mark those with another color if you need. Well, that's it guys. I really hope you liked this tutorial and pattern. If you did, please don't forget to like and share. This video, it helps me out so much. 
Also, if you want to always be notified whenever I release a new video, you can go to my main YouTube page and click that little bell button next to the subscribe button to always be notified whenever I release a new video. Also, I have two groups on Facebook called Crochet Zone Public and Crochet for the Masses. Crochet Zone Public is a place you can share anything on. Even the designers will go there and share their stuff. But if you are looking more for a secret kind of group, then I recommend checking out Crochet for the Masses. Also, I have a Pinterest community board where designers will come there and pin uh, their newest designs or older designs, but it's all free direct pattern links. So you can go there and hopefully find what you're looking for for your next project. Also, now I have a newsletter that I, I post everything that has come out for me for that week and I put it in a newsletter and mail it to you once a week. So if you haven't done that yet, please go to my site or there's a link down below the video. Click on to sign up for the email. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching.